Hey friend, a mom's first mission field is at home. So let's create more joy in yours. On this podcast, we dive into homeschool, faith, and intentional living and bring you practical tips for finding the joy in the journey of it all. I'm your host, Katie, a homebody, mama of three, and Christian life coach turned homeschool mom. So grab your iced coffee and let's get growing. This is the Joy at Home podcast. Hey there, friend. Thanks so much for tuning in today. This is the Joy at Home podcast. I'm your host, Katie, and I am so honored to have you tuning in today as we are going to be talking about my foolproof method for eliminating decision fatigue. I'm praying that this is going to be really helpful in your life and that it's exactly what you need to hear on this day in this moment. In the classic movie, Runaway Bride, The main character, Maggie Carpenter, which is played by Julia Roberts, she's a small town girl who eventually becomes notorious for leaving grooms at the altar. And her story gets picked up by New York columnist Ike Graham, who is played by Richard Gere. And as the movie unfolds, Ike notices a seemingly minor detail about Maggie that ends up being a major turning point in the movie. He picks up on the fact that Maggie doesn't know how she likes her eggs cooked. You heard that right. She doesn't know how she likes her eggs cooked. If you haven't seen the movie, you'll have to watch it to see how all of this comes together. But what I want you to notice is that Maggie doesn't know what she wants or what she really likes. And because of this, she floats around and she conforms to the likes of whatever man she's dating at that moment. But then everything changes when Maggie discovers her true wants, needs, and her values. Only then do the pieces of Maggie's life seem to fall into place and she ends up genuinely happy and satisfied. You see, Maggie didn't know what she wanted because she didn't know what she valued. And because of that, it felt impossible for her to make decisions or to commit to anything. It can be exhausting trying to make a decision when you have to think things over and over and over, right? When you have to look at it this way and that way, when you have to think about this possible outcome or that possible outcome, It's like you're stuck in analysis paralysis. That's what I like to call it. Does that resonate with you? Like, do you ever feel exhausted trying to make the quote unquote right decision? Like you're just completely stuck. Like you don't know what your answer or your commitment could or should be. Well, there is a very, very simple solution. To eliminate decision fatigue, you have to know what your values are. If someone said to you, what are your values? You would likely respond with love, family, kindness, maybe integrity, etc. right? Those are good things. But the thing is that you can go much, much deeper than those surfacey answers. Things like adventure, nature, organization, financial security, honor, and authenticity. Those things are values that we don't typically list right off the top of our head. Yet when you take a closer look into your own life, you might be surprised to discover that those things are actually some of your core values. Your values are the foundational beliefs that anchor your life. They define who you are at the core by reflecting the things that matter most to you. They're the principles, the concepts, and the attributes that you hold most dear, and your values can actually serve as a roadmap or a guiding light for how you can live your best life. Knowing what your core values are, knowing what's most important to you, will help you make decisions before there are even decisions to make. Let me say that again. Knowing what your core values are will help you to make decisions before there are even decisions to make. Goodbye decision fatigue and goodbye analysis paralysis. Your values are such a part of you that you can even become known for them. I bet you know someone who values being on time. 
They're the first to arrive at every event, every time. And I bet you know someone who values fun. They're the life of the party wherever they go. Personally, I highly value adventure and I do value family. And it explains why my family, a lot of times in the summer, will take trips to go visit and explore the national parks to go on those kind of nature adventures as a family. When we dig into scripture, we can uncover many important core values and examples, great examples of people who lived by their values. Think about Queen Esther. She held values of courage and obedience. Ruth held a value of loyalty. Jesus' disciples held values of humility and courage, wisdom, and good counsel. One of Jesus' core values was kindness. Pharaoh held values of power and being in control. That didn't didn't actually work out too well for him, but he did hold very tightly to those core values nonetheless. Moses held values of trust and leadership as he heeded God's word and led God's people out of captivity from Pharaoh. Today's episode is brought to you by my signature program, Faith-Fueled Breakthrough. This foundational, go-at-your-own-pace biblical life coaching course is designed to help you trade the broken pieces of your past for a clear and abundant future. Healing, breakthrough, freedom, clarity, and joy. It's all waiting for you over at faithfueledbreakthrough.com. We can find many other examples of core values in the scriptures. Let's take a look at a few of them. Servanthood. In Matthew 20, 25 through 28, Jesus teaches about the values of humbleness and servanthood. It says, Jesus called them over and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and those in high positions act as tyrants over them. It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Generosity. We see the value of generosity in 2 Corinthians 9, 5 through 7. It says, Therefore, I considered it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you, to go on ahead to you and arrange it in advance, the generous gift you promise so that it will be ready as a gift and not as an extortion. The point is this, the person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion since God loves a cheerful giver. How about the value, the core value of diligence? Proverbs 10, 4 illustrates this beautifully. It says, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Are you beginning to see how the Bible is loaded up with core values for you to discover? You just have to open the pages and and dig in. There's so much there to unpack. Let's see if you can identify all the values mentioned in Colossians 3, 12 through 14. It says, therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. There are tons of important core values listed out in these verses, right? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, forgiveness, and love. So friend, I want to ask you today, what are your core values? What are the things, the attributes, the characteristics that you really, really value? Things that are deeper than the surfacey answer of faith and family. Those are great things. But I want to ask you, do you value things like adventure, freedom, honor? I encourage you today to really dig deep and to really think about this and to discover and write down what your 
top values are. What are the top three to five things that you really deeply value? Knowing your values is going to help you create a vision of what your best life looks like. It's going to help you eliminate decision fatigue as you face circumstances and situations where you have to make tough choices. When something comes up, you'll be able to look at your values and they will guide you like a guiding light or a roadmap towards the answer and the solutions that are best for you. So together, Let's commit to knowing our values and to living them out. Can you do that today? I say yes and amen to that. If you want to go deeper or if you're looking for more guidance, I want you to go check out my easy to use life coaching course at faithfueledbreakthrough.com or just click that link in the show notes. And until next time, my sweet, beautiful friend, keep living with joy and with your core values in mind. It's my hope and prayer that today's episode sparked joy for you. If it did, would you leave a five-star review wherever you're listening from? That would be an awesome blessing. Also, if you don't want to miss any episodes, be sure to hit subscribe. And remember, mama friend, you don't have to have it all figured out to move forward. Just take your one next step towards more joy in your heart and home.